do your check sales do for you? Um, you know, what do they do if they don't work? Um, ABO is IgM versus IgG. You know, those kind of questions. Because I can't let you forget that. Um, so what does a positive auto control mean? So first of all, what is an auto control? It's where you've got your patient's own plasma and your right. And so you have made their red cell suspension, right, just like you would for your cosmetic, and you're just putting their blood back together. And then we're just playing with it, just like we're playing with everything else, right? Giving it our potentiator, giving it our temperature just to see if it reacts, right? So if your auto control is positive, what does that mean? What would you see that positive auto control? Correct, an autoantibody. An antibody against your own blood. Right? So compare a chemical elution to a physical elution. In the chemical and physical that we talked about yesterday, um, the physical elution was like the Louis elution where we actually physically ruptured the red cells, or we put them in heat and physically ruptured the red cells, where the physical elution was we used a chemical to get it off, remember the ether and the and all those. So between chemical elution and physical elution, which one's best for IgG? Did you say it backwards? You said physical was when we used a chemical. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Physical, remember, <laughs> was, was where we, um, yeah, I probably did, slipped up. Physical is where you actually physically rupture the red cell. Okay. The chemical was where we used like the digitone acid or the ether. So which one um, is good for IgG? Could you use the quick freeze method with the IgG? Since, I don't know. <laughs> it's in your notes, do you remember? Which one's which? IgG recovery is good, right? So physical is IgG, chemical is IgM. Right. What new notes is over the exam? Other than the old questions, what uh, new notes? It's the um, ahas and wahas, and one other one. Antibody ID and ahas and wahas. We're just going over the review sheet for the past. So you just need to know that they both, one is chemical and one is physical. And which antibody is good for what? One is good for IgM, one is good for IgG. Right. Okay. okay. How would you perform an elution? When you have to do it. How? Oh, I'm sorry, when? You're right. When would you perform? Oh, send me home. Yeah. yeah, when would you? When your TAT is positive. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Karen. Thanks. Um, so remember your IAT procedure, whether it's an antibody screen or it's a panel or it's a weak D, the importance of we each step. So in other words, why do we add lists? What does LIST do in that step? It is a force. And it reduces zeta potential. Exactly right. Good. Okay. Why do we cook it? Why do we put it in an incubator? We're not ruling. Well, okay. Or to make the warm ones react. Correct? Yes. Make the cold ones go away and make the warm ones react. Exactly right. Okay. Um, why do we wash? What are we washing away? The reagents. The free. Right. Right. <coughs> right. And so again, what was in the tube to begin with? Patient plasma. Cell suspension. And your lips. Right? So is that not what we're washing away then? Because what do we have left? What, the cell button and what's on the cell, what's on the cells in the cell button? 
Antibody. The antigen, because they didn't go away, but also the bound antibody. antibody. Right now you have red cells at the bottom of that tube with antibody bound to the red cell, right? Okay. And so then what's your next step? You wash them, you take them out, you have dry cell button. AHG, and what is AHG doing? What is in the AHG? It's anti-human globulin. Anti means it's an antibody, and it is between the cells. Agglutination, right? Because that's that visible thing that you can see with your eye. Correct? Okay. And then if your AHG is negative, what do you have to do next? Okay. And what are the check cells telling you? Correct, correct. If your check cells don't work, you don't, okay, what kind of reaction are you expecting with your check cells? Two plus. Two plus, right. And if you don't get a reaction, your test is invalid and you have to start all over. Correct. Good. See, you're learning, you know, in this stuff. Okay. Um, cross out method for antibody ID. Um, so we're going to go over that in just a second. We're going to kind of do your homework together. Um, why do you do a panel? What, what did you do? Doctor orders a type and screen or a type and cross match. Oh, I am so sorry. No idea who it is. I don't know how to type. Don't turn it off. Down arrow. Hit the back on the side. On the side. Do what? Anybody on the side. Anybody on the side. You can tell I am not used to cell phones. I don't know who that is. I have it in my pocket. I'm like, oh, I'm grandma today. I'm sorry. Um, what was I saying? Um, okay, so what did you do that brought you to doing a panel? Is it just you do it automatically? You did an antibody screen. You did an antibody screen. And what did your antibody screen come up? Positive. Positive. And so you did a panel then, which is just more screen cells, right? Basically, to help you identify your antibody, right? That's why you got there. If your screen was negative, would you do a panel? No. No, you would not. Exactly right. Exactly right. But if the patient had a previous antibody, you're looking at their records from two years ago. And on their record, it says the patient had an ant a duffy. But your antibody screen is negative today. So what does that mean to you? You still have to give them negative duffy? Correct. You still have to give them antigen negative. Do you have to do a panel? No. no. If your screen came up positive, you'd never do a panel because your panel's going to be negative too. Right? It's just telling you you have to do something. Else. Okay. So talking about your panel. We said that your panel cells, had your initial panel had to be in date, right? Could not use expired, they had to be in date. And that your antigram, that sheet that you did for your homework is your antigram, right? Had to match the lot number on your panel, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what are you doing when you're crossing out? What are you crossing out? The negative reaction or the positive. Okay, so what are you crossing out? You have negative reactions. You can only cross out in the negative line. Mm -hmm. But what are your reactions on the antigram? Positive, right? So when you have a positive on your antigram, a negative reaction, that means your antibody did not bind with that antigen. So then you could eliminate it. So you are eliminating antigen specificities to an unknown antibody, right? You're not eliminating antibodies, you're eliminating antigens on that red cell. That doesn't correspond with your antibody. Um, so what kind of reactions would suggest that you have more than one antibody? Multiple match patterns. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Crossing out, it's eliminating specimens. You're eliminating antigens That, are, that don't correspond with your antibody. Okay. Remember the antigen is on the reagent cell. You have an antibody, you don't know what it is from the patient.
But if your antibody did not bind with that antigen, uh -huh. then you know your antibody is not to that antigen. Okay? Uh, let's see. So what ex uh, reactions in a panel would suggest that you had multiple antibodies? So when you're all done and you've crossed out everything and you have maybe three that you can't decide which one it is, what is your next step? To match, find the matching pattern. Okay? Now I've been giving you single antibodies and so luckily they've been mostly matching the pattern, right? But what if you had it didn't match the pattern? Or no, do an elution. Separate out. No, and you've already got the antibody. Right. So because you aren't getting clear cut reactions, right? They're not the pattern is not matching. Maybe you've got a one that's reacting in cold in two cells and the other one's reacting in warm in five other cells, and you're like, what the heck is going on? Could be that you have a cold and a warm, right? So in other words, you're having, your, your patterns don't match, and you're like pulling out your hair because it's two o'clock in the morning and you really haven't had lunch yet, right? Okay, so your patterns don't match. You're looking and you're like, uh, wait a minute, in Barb's class, it was always positive and negative. Why isn't it matching anything? Okay, so that's one way you can think, okay, I have more than one antibody. Again, if one if you're getting positives in, in the third in the immediate spin that are three plus, and then at 37 on a totally another cell, you're getting it two plus at AHG. Well, we know that colds don't react strongly in, in one cell and then react warmly in another cell. That wouldn't make sense, right? So again, you might have a cold and a warm. So how can you tell you what's the most uh, what reactions would suggest multiple antibodies? So this is a fill-in, okay, on your test. So you could say the pattern doesn't match one specific antibody, okay? You could say reactions in different phases, right? So again, warm, immediate, uh, immediate spin or warm at 37. You could say... Um, Different strengths, right? So in this cell, you're getting two plus, but on that cell, you're getting four plus. You're thinking, you know, again, that doesn't make any sense. So different strengths. So your patterns don't match. They're, they're in different strengths in different phases, and you're, and you're getting um, different reactions. Okay, so you've got um, antibodies, and you can't rule it out. You've got the, or antigens, I'm sorry, that you haven't ruled out. So we said you could go to a selected cell panel, and we're going to do this next, too. So the rules of your selected cell panel. We said you could then go to your refrigerator and pull an expired panel, right? Selected cells can come from an expired panel, okay? Um, again, you want to find one that is negative for your antibody, right? positive for the antigens you want to rule out. Because isn't that how we rule out? Our reactions are negative, but the, that cell has that antigen, right? So your patient needs to be negative, the cell needs to be positive, okay, to rule it out. <clears throat> we said that to be 95% confident that that's truly the antibody we have. How many positive reactions did I say you had to have? Okay. How many negative reactions did I say you had to have? Three. Okay. So if in your panel you only had two positive reactions, what would you have to do? But what got you to your panel? <coughs> and what reaction did you have in your antibody screen? A positive. So if you only have two in your panel, you know you had at least one in your screen, right? Because that's what drove you to do a panel. So don't forget. So even if you do 10 cells on a panel, think to your head, I really did 13, right? Because I did three on my screen to find out that it was there. And then I did 10 more. So don't forget you did your screen, okay? On your quiz today, um, you were supposed to do MTS, but again, our MTS, we're not, 
we're getting new, she's picking up stuff from Breeze today, and so great, Jack Gretchen's going to play with it on Monday, so hopefully we have good stuff. So I want to say thank you for having to do the screen today by MTS. So what I did was I um, gave you an antibody, and then I looked at your antigram on your screen that's in your box, and I gave you the reactions that would have happened had you been able to do the MTS on that antibody. You're going to then do a 10 panel screen, a pan, 10 cell panel, but you really have 13 cross out cells, right? Because you can look back at your antigram. Did you say three were needed or 13 were needed? You only need 10 in a panel, right? Well, you really don't need 10, but we're just saying you'll do 10. But don't forget, you've already done three in your screen. So you would have a total of 13. So today I gave you the reactions for your screen. So while you're sitting there in your incubation, get your antigram out, it's in your box, and figure out what, figure out what your positive and negatives are and just start playing on your antigram in, in your box. Right there you're thinking you might even be able to narrow it down to four or five. And then when you start crossing out on your panel, and your panel maybe doesn't cross out big S, and you're like, oh, wait, I already crossed it out on my screen. Voila, it's one less that you have to do a cell for, right? Okay, because it's totally legal. You can totally use both, because your screen cells are always, or yeah, your screen cells are always in date too, right? Yeah, okay. So to be 95% confident, you need three positives and three negatives. Um, and I already said, please don't, don't throw out your screen because that that's a positive you already did. So antigen typing. So after you've done a panel and you've identified your antibody and this person needs blood and if they have anti-Duffy, let's say, Duffy A, and they need blood, what do you have to do to that unit of blood? If the patient has the antibody, somebody told me a minute ago. Or look for antigen, anti-D. Right. You're going to go to the donor blood. You can go to your refrigerator. And you're going to know that Duffy A is, I'm making up a number because I don't remember, 50% of the population. And you're like, I need two units. So if half the people are positive, I better pull four units to screen. And hopefully you'll get two out of the four. So um, does the blood bank or the blood center, not the blood bank, but um, do they antigen type everything and just not let you know what it is because you have to check it anyway? No. Um, no. Because if you have to order a special unit, I mean, they're obviously typing units. What's good with screen. blood centers is because the people that donate usually donate all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it could be that that particular person, they've used their blood before, and they're going to keep records. I mean, if they're going to take the time to antigen type you for a patient, okay, maybe your blood is in their blood bank, and there's somebody's looking for an, a, a negative for Duffy A, and so they pull one out, and so they may already have stickers on their blood so they know, yeah, right? Because smaller hospitals are going to call. They're not going to antigen type. They're not going to have the reagents. They're going to call and say, I need a Duffy A negative unit. Mm -hmm. So obviously if they do it on multiple patients, because again, if you know you have need two units, they know they're going to have to pull four just to hope to get two. Well, now they've got four done. So yeah, they're going to keep record of that. But is it routine? No. 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 Um, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Sorry, you said that the reason we do it is when an antibody shows up positive? Correct. Okay. And we or you have a previously identified no longer active. And we expect it to be a negative reaction? In what? In the antibody. Oh, absolutely. That, well, that's what you hope it to be. Yes. Is that what you're asking me? You want the antigen typing reaction to be negative. Yes. When do you antigen type? Yeah. When you know the patient has an antibody. We don't want to give them blood with that antigen, right? Yeah. 
or if they had a previous antibody because they were exposed at a previous pregnancy or a previous transfusion, it's not acting up today. But you know from immunology, once your body sees the enemy, it remembers. And so we still want to give them antigen negative blood. Okay. So again, what reactions are you expecting? Is that what you were asking me? Yeah. Okay. So again, negative. Because if it's positive, you're going to go and get a little positive Duffy sticker sticking on it and put it right back in the blood bank. Because if you have the positive Duffy antigen, I'm not going to give you the antibody because boom, you're going to react and Pointless. you're going to be sitting in the pathologist's office going, what the heck were you thinking? Mm. Right? Okay. Um, so what cell is positive? Oh, what cell can you use for a positive or negative control? So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So, don't let me forget. How do you resolve Rouleau? And this is from a previous test. Saline replacement. Saline replacement, yes. Um, the Donneth Lamsiner test identifies what? What antibody? Which one is associated with proximal cold hemoglobinuria? What antibody? Okay. Auto anti I causes what? Who usually produces an auto anti I? Maybe that's a better. Adults. Adults in what disease state? That's probably where I'm going with this question. No, there's two diseases with an auto anti I. One starts with an I. The first word starts with an I. Second start word starts with an M. Infectious mononucleosis. And mycoplasm pneumoniae are your eyes. So again, look at that um, PowerPoint. Um, define ab ab absorption. Again, that's a multiple choice. So you just need to know what the definition of, of absorption is. Define chimerism. Remember what chimerism was? Multiple blood types. Multiple blood types in a single person. So uh, what reactions would you expect? What we call it? MF, mixed field, positive and negative, right? Okay. Again, old stuff. Um, you're going to have a short answer. You're going to define elution. And let me tell you right now, the easiest way to define an elution, breaking the antigen-antibody bond. Easiest way to say it. That's all you're doing. You're breaking the antibody off that antigen. Okay, either with chemical or bust in your bubble. Okay. Um, if I give you a genotype um, in the RH system, what I'm asking you is, oh no, I give you the reactions and you're going to tell me the phenotype. So this is a very easy question if you know what, if you can think about it. So if I tell you that a patient is C, D, E. What does that mean to you? On their red cell, they have C antigen, D antigen, and B, E antigen. So if I add anti-C reagent to this red blood cell, am I going to get a positive reaction or a negative reaction? Positive. If I add anti-D reagent to this red blood cell, am I going to get a positive reaction or a negative reaction? Positive. Positive. If I add anti-D, re I'm sorry, E reagent, what am I going to get, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. If I add anti-little E reagent to this patient, what am I going to get? If I add anti-little C to this patient, what am I going to get? So if I gave you these reactions, you would be able to tell me this answer. If I said it was C positive, D positive, E positive in the lab, you and E negative, little C negative, you would be able to tell me this person has these answers. Do you understand? So I give you these reactions, you have to give me this answer. Okay. 
again, multiple choice. So if, if one of your choices is little e, then you know that's not the right answer, right? Because they don't have little e. But this is what I found in the laboratory. Okay. Um, Bombay oh. blood is special because? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, back to the CDE thing. Sure. So what was the, basically just the C positive? Okay, so if I give you these reactions, so ignore this for right now. Mm -hmm. I tell you in the laboratory, I, just like we do the A and the B and the D, mm -hmm. okay, so I did big C, exactly the same way. You put a C on your tube, you added a drop of patient's blood, you added a drop of anti-C, and you got a positive reaction. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, with your D, this is just simply your D, mm -hmm. okay, and your E. So then you would be able to tell me that this is what the patient's phenotype is. Okay. Make sense? Yes. So again, if an answer has little e in it, you'd say, huh, that's not right. They couldn't have little e because it was negative. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So that's basically what I'm saying. I'll give you all of their reactions and you just have to tell me what their phenotype is. That would be like me saying that, um, you know, you did A, anti-A, and you did anti-B and it was positive, and this was negative, what's their blood type? A. So it's just the same thing, except now it's in the RH system. Gotcha. Okay? Okay, uh, where was I? Bombay blood is special because? It doesn't have the H. It doesn't have the H, right. So they're all O's, but they don't have H substance. Exactly right. Um, blood group reactions with anti-H strong to weak. So there's a PowerPoint way back in your ADO where I list who's the strongest in H and who's the weakest. Okay, so just review that again. And it was on a previous test, so just look at that. Which antibodies are IgM versus IgG, cold versus warm, delayed transfusion reactions, destroyed by enzymes, and resistant to, resistant to malaria and dosage, which was really your last test. Right? I'm not going to have you fill in a chart like you did last time. It's going to be a lot of which of these four doesn't match the others. And you're going to be able to say, oh, well, this one's cold. This one's cold. Oh, there's a warm one. This one's cold. Okay? Um, or again, this one reacts at um, you know, AHG and this one doesn't or whatever. Okay? So basically, things like your because you can't forget this stuff, even though you know probably dumped it already. Got to keep it in your head because this is what you got to do in the real world. So you're going to see it over and over and over again. So again, review your old test. Which one? Um, it has shows a delayed reaction. You remember? Which one's running high? Kids. Kids. Yes. Um, destroyed by enzymes. Uh, Duffy and M and S. Right. Duffy and M and S. Resist, resistance to malaria, which blood group system? Duffy, right? And then again, who doses? RH, kid, RH. Kid and Duffy the monkey eat M&Ms. Yeah. M&Ms. Yeah. Okay. Um, gel system versus tube. This is new because I have not had this on a previous test. So you are going to give me three, I think it is, three advantages or disadvantages to the tube system versus the gel. So again, this is kind of a given, right? Um, how much time did it take you to do the gel compared to sitting at the table doing the tube? Not very much, right? What did you do? Squirt it into a test tube, stuck it in an incubator, and then spun. So incubation time, you can go off and do something. Spinning time, you can go off and do something. So tech time, very minimal, right? Okay. Um, the reactions on the gel cards, you guys did them one day, and then Gretchen showed them to you the next day, right? Could you have held the tubes that long? Some of you, from walking to your chair, they just showed me at the front desk, you're like, well, it was there a second ago, right? So again, an advantage, you can hold the reactions. So if you're on the night shift, and you're getting wonky reactions, you can save your card and show the supervisor the next day. Are the cards bad? Was my patient doing something funky? You know, so you get another opinion. Okay. Cost-wise, um, we did a study and we did find that the MTS was a little bit cheaper 
Um, and again, but if you add in tech time, it's a whole lot cheaper. Okay. Um, disadvantages of the gel system. One big one is that our cards didn't work, right? And a lot of times the cards that we do get are either because they were stored incorrectly. Some people stored them in the refrigerator when they should have been stored at room temp. We had a ton of them and they worked for years. And we had them, and then we were going through that accreditation thing. So we decided to clean the lab and we moved them all up on that top shelf in the, the lab, okay? And the temperature just got to 150 in there. As you guys know, sometimes that'll happen, right? And then when we did blood bank the next time, they were all dried up. And it's like, dog, we've had been using these expired ones for two, three years, and all of them were bad. But what about the tubes that were in the storeroom? Doggone, a darn thing happened to them. Okay, so again, storage by a place, a big disadvantage. Um, okay, so your reactions on the tube cells. I know I don't have this up there, but I do know it's a question. So what were your reactions in the tube cell when you looked at it? So if you had, and so it's in that, the, not this week's PowerPoint, but last, um, I think it was last week. So the picture in the tube, sorry, I can't get my eraser, didn't work very good. So I have my gel, and if all my reactions are up here, one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. Four plus, which means my, my cells clumped so big they didn't go through the Plinko board, right? Okay. If I have, so forget this, and all my cells are down here, one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. Negative. 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 Well, yeah, negative. negative. Right. Right. And, right, and, then, and I'm not going to ask you the two threes. I just know, need you to know, are they all at the top or are they all at the bottom at this point? Okay? And what that means. Positive or negative. <coughs> okay. So, any questions on that so far? So, the disadvantage from just storage? Then what is it? Um, that's expensive on the And whether or not you have the equipment. I mean, you can, you can do the MTS manually like we're doing it. Or you can do the ProView or another blood bank analyzer and make it automated. Mm -hmm. So either way. But um, yeah, for dosing, did you say we are or aren't using Lutheran? No. Okay. Okay. So when you're doing your panels on your test today, make sure you read those. Um, another big one on this um, test especially for your panels, make sure you read those slides as who's clinically significant, right? I mean, you had to know that for last week, your week's test, who's clinically significant. Oh, I forgot to say, so what does it mean if it's clinically significant? She had that in review. I'm sorry? Correct. Or you could say it's going to shorten the life, set, um, life of the donated red cells. Same thing, transfusion reaction, right? You're going to have a reaction. And it's not going to be good for the patient, right? And I think that is a fill-in as well. You're just going to tell them what it, what it means to be clinically significant. It's going to hurt the patient. So what cell is a positive or negative control antigen type? We're going to need that in just a second. Thank you. And you said for the Donald Lanstein test, I mean, what is it? You're saying basically the P? The P? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Monday What's the matter? Wondering if we have class on Monday. No, we don't. And I guess Jean told you that we're going to go back to our regular schedule next week because Sandy's here. Decided to pick his own birthday. So I don't know. Does that mean I have you? I know you're going to take your test in the morning with Jean. And I told her to give you an hour. And then are we still doing the Tuesday, I guess? Yeah. Or after lunch on Tuesday, I think. Your lab on, no, that's not right. Because I told her that your lab on Monday and Tuesday would probably only take it down. Because we're just going to do a plain prospect with no problem. So I think she was going to let you go to lunch and then so it might, it might be shorter. Oh, darn, right? Shorter day with you on that Tuesday is doubtful. Doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she'll keep you longer knowing that I only need you for now. I don't know. 
And then Wednesday, I guess we have lecture then noon to two like we normally would. And then uh, the other thing I do need you to do, so because we're back to our regular schedule, we have lab on Tuesday, noon to two, I want to do a routine cross match. G, uh, Gretchen is going to bring units of blood from the lab, the SEGS, the little portions of units of blood, and then you are going to cross match your own blood against two donors. Okay. So we've already done your screens, and your screens were all negative. So again, we should, I mean, we're going to repeat your screen just so that you know the flow, but that way we shouldn't have any reactions. And then um, we're going to take, keep your blood, and then on Friday, we're going to do antigen typing. So we're going to take your blood, and I'm going to give you anti-big C, anti-big E, anti-little E, anti-duffy, anti-whatever I have. And we're going to mix it with your blood, and we're going to see what other antigens you have on your red cells. And then you have a quiz, but I think it's a modified, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time, if I'm not mistaken, where I kind of give you some reactions. Like on your quiz today, I'm going to give you your screen reaction so you don't have to do the screen. I, I think I do that like on your next one, where I give you your screen reactions, and then you're going to tell me that you would need to do a panel, and then I'm going to give you the panel reactions, and then you're going to... So, so you don't have to do it. Well, you know how to do it. It's just a matter of can you follow through even with your reactions? Can you cross off, tell me what it is, and do an antigen typing sheet? And the week after that, there's one day I have you for gods uh, when she's out of town. I think that's that Thursday or Friday. So that blood bank test, I guess, will be Thursday. So I'm going to give you the test first, and then we're going to go straight to lab. And we're just going to do lab all day. And that lab that I'm going to give you on that Thursday is the... Patient number one on your practical, which is 50% of your practical. So you're going to be able to practice that. The other two patients on your practical we will do on Friday. That's a mom and baby. Mom is a forward and reverse and an antibody screen. You already know how to do that. We're just putting a different label on it. Babies are a forward, no reverse, and a DAT. Again, we've done all that. We're just putting a different label on it. But again, I want you to do it with that label so it doesn't mess you up. So again, that will be a short lab. And then the week after that, which is week seven, we will your take-home test will be done, uh, due week seven. I think you'll have a written test that Monday. Test number six will be Monday. Here, and then we're going to go over your, you know, then I'm going to lecture on that. And then Tuesday, half of you are going to have your practical from 11 to 2. And then on Wednesday, the other half, you're going to have your practical from 11 to 2. We decided to split days because it worked better for Jean. So then she could have some micro time both times. And that way, if you get to go home at 11 on Tuesday, you just know you'll be here late on Wednesday. So something to think about. We'll come up with an uh, easy way to split, and then you guys can talk amongst yourselves. I just only need one person per table as far as whether Tuesday's better for you or Wednesday's better for you. Okay. Um, so she's supposed to be typing all that up on a little schedule, but I think she had it and then kind of tossed it when Sandy came yesterday. So it's all his fault. And you can blame the late president of the United States. Blame it on a one day. <laughs> Just blame it on what? Blame it on a one day old. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I appreciate y'all being flexible and everything. I tell you what, blood bank has been stressful the last four years. I mean, breast cancer surgery, then reconstruction surgery the next the year after that, and then what was last year? No, I think last year was actually okay, and then this year with Sandy, it's like, no, I'm done. And blood bank's stressful anyway. I lose 10 pounds every time I do blood bank. Every time. Which I love, because then when you get weighed in at the doctor, they're like, oh, you lost weight. Then clothes fit better. But I'll put it all right back on like the week after. Spring break, right? You just have on me. <laughs> but it must be affecting my husband because he told me last night, he goes, I lost five pounds. <laughs> oh, good on you. All right, so let's do a panel. Okay, so you got a panel for homework, so just look at your homework.
these are your reactions. Does anybody need a potty break or anything? You know, I'm supposed to give you a break every hour. Take it, you know, can you do a potty or anything? Stretch your legs. Just make an offer. Because I have to. Oh, no. We're just going to get three more <laughs> Which means was it really? an EHG? I haven't had any. Which is warm, yeah. right? So they didn't do an immediate spin. So immediately you can think, oh well, it's not a cold, right? So it's probably not an amber and aromatic or a P, right? So you have to do what? You have to go to your first negative cell, correct? Okay. And I know you've done all this, but I'm just going to go through it so I'm sure you know it pre test. And looking at your reactions. If it's positive, if it's a negative reaction on your, uh, or if your cell is negative for the antigen and your reaction is negative, you can't do anything, right? Negative and negative, can't do anything. If it is positive on your negative cell, what can you do? What's your next question? Is, is it dose? Does it dose? So big C doses with little c. So big C is positive and little c is positive, so can I do anything? No, mm -hmm. no because it is heterozygous. Okay, then I have big E, negative, can't do anything with it. And little e, what does little e dose with? Big E, big e but big E is negative, so what can I do to little e? Okay. I can eliminate it. Okay, F, and what is F again? C and G? C E, e combo. <laughs> little C, little E combo. Doesn't dose with anybody. Okay. So can I rule it out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got rid of that one. Okay, and then these guys are all negative. And then I go to Solano. Solano is not a doser, so can I eliminate it? Mm -hmm. Okay. KPB. JSB. Yes. Um, okay, now I'm, I'm up to Duffy. Duffy doses, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So Duffy A is gone. positive. Duffy B is negative, so it is gone, just like Chris told us. Yeah. Can't do anything with Duffy B. Now, kid, they dose with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Again, A is negative, B is positive, so we can eliminate it. Then we go to the next positive. Lewis B is not a doser. So we can eliminate it. S doses with? S. Both are positive. Can't do anything. M and N Dose. dose with each other. But N. N is negative, so we can M. cross out M. Which we really shouldn't have figured it was M anyway, because again, we're at MPS, which is 37, so pi is just anything. Um, P can't do anything with Lewis B. Lutrin B, I'm sorry. We can eliminate it, correct? Yep. Then what do you tell yourself? Go to the next negative cell and do the exact same thing all over again, all right? Okay, so you all did this. Does anybody have any questions on that? Everybody understand how they're what they're doing? So when you are all done, the first question I ask you 
which antibody is suspected? So which antibody did you not rule out that matches your pattern over here? D. Big D. Okay, so your question number one was big D, correct? All right. Then the next question is which antibodies are not ruled out? So which ones could you not rule out when you were all done? Big C, little C. Big C. Big C. Big E. Big E. Big C. 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 Big Big D, Big C, Big E, CW, Bell, JSA, and Luthre. Okay, so looking at your answer. Can you ask those questions? Do you want us to include the one that we suspect? Like, you want to include D in number two? You could. It would not be wrong. If you don't, I don't mark it wrong. And if you do, I don't mark okay. it wrong. You can totally think that way. That's not wrong. But if you have it in the other line, I don't run it wrong either way. Okay. I have some students that do and some students that don't. Okay? You understand what she was saying? That because you didn't rule out D, it could be answer number two as well. Okay? And then, um, so for your, of all the antigens on question number two, at this point I told you you could list them all and I wasn't going to mark it wrong. And you can always list them all and I'm not going to make them wrong. But which ones of those are clinically significant? Which ones are we going to have to worry about? Mm -hmm. Not Luther, mm -hmm. Big C and Big E, correct? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So again, you can list them all on your test and it will not be wrong. But what you will find on this, one of the two panels is there's a ton of them. But again, are they the VAL and the CW and the JSAs? That, aren't clinically significant. You can list them all if you want, but you don't have to. Think of who's clinically significant. So on that power, the PowerPoint this week, we had who's clinically significant at 37, and who's clinically significant always, make sure you know those two rules. Did you have a question? Yeah, just real quick. Um, on the K? Cal? Yeah, uh, the big K. Does it not matter that the only positive was when it was um, heterozygous with little k? Big K has two positives, right? It's got two positives. One's in the positive area and the other positive is in the negative. So when you look at that one, it's next to a little k. But it doesn't. I guess those. I didn't understand your question. It's what? It's Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a number. Let me look at the number. So cell number two? No. Um, it's positive. Seven. Go down to number seven. That's where it is, yeah. Um, big K is positive, and little K is positive because it's heterozygous. Okay, Kel doesn't dose. It's because it doesn't dose, we don't have to. Worry. Correct. Okay. Correct. But this is a good point, okay? Let's say Kel was the one that matched your pattern, and Kel was the one you couldn't eliminate. And on your panel, you only have two positive reactions. Does it match your Fisher's 3 plus 3 rule? Do you have three positives and three negatives? No. Well, how did it get you to this panel? What did you do that made you do this panel? Your screen. So you had to have had a positive on your screen. At least one, right? So if you have one on your screen and two on your panel, doesn't that give you three? Okay. Okay, so of all the ones that were positive or um, that we couldn't rule out, we'll just look at um, big C and big E. We couldn't rule that out. So now I have to go to a selected cell panel. Your selected cell panel. Did I give you a copy of this the other day? No. No? Okay. And I should have a stack of them somewhere. Thank you. 
Hey, Barb, I have a question. Yes. So if you get to your antibody suspected and then the ones you can't rule out, if do you ever come across like when uh, if they're not clinically significant, like the ones that are left are none of them are clinically significant? Okay, yes. That does happen. So then yes. it doesn't matter. It does, because if you have ruled out everything else and that's the only one that's positive, then it becomes clinically significant. Oh, okay. Make sense? Yeah. But then you have to find, know, do I have to find antigen-negative blood, or can I just go cross-match compatible? Okay. So you have to know those rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Okay. So now you have a selected cell panel. Now we said we could not rule out big C, right, and big E. Right, those are the two. Right. And you notice that your selected cell panel is blank. You don't have any pluses and minuses, right? So you're thinking, well, where are my pluses and minuses going to come from? So you're going to go to an expired panel in your refrigerator. And you're going to grab the integrate. So this is the one that's not the, that we're actually doing, but it's different than your homework. You're going to go to an expired panel from your refrigerator, and you need to find a cell, and we're just going to make it up on your paper. For future tests and everything, you're just going to write what you want it to be, because to go find it is a lot of work, okay? But so what do you want to write on your selected cell panel? So let's say we use cell number one from panel XYZ. Again, they can be expired, doesn't matter, right? What do I want my D to be on the antigram on my expired panel? I need my D to be negative. Why do I need my D to be negative? So it doesn't react. Because that's what you want, because what kind of reactions do I want over here? I need negative reactions, correct? Because I can only rule out on a negative cell. Right? Isn't that how we ruled out in your homework? We went to the first one that was negative in MTS, and that's when we started crossing out. Okay? So if I need to eliminate big C, what do I want my cell to be for big C? Positive or negative? positive. But it doses. So what other thing do I have to make sure it is? Little, little, c, little c negative. Exactly right. Make sense? Now with my negative reaction, I can go along and I can rule out big C. Right? Okay. Then the next one was big E. What do I want big E to be positive. But then what do I have to consider? Little e. Thing. Little e. What do I want little e to be? Negative. Negative. <coughs> Correct. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now if I do that and I find that one cell that's got that exact antigram, not going to happen, but we're in fantasy land, <laughs> okay? I run that panel cell with my patient, and I get a negative reaction. I can now say, nope, it's not big C, and nope, it's not big E, so my antibody is big D. And I can be 95% confident. In the real world, you find what will best suit you, and then find another one that will best suit you once you cross that off. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it may take several. Yeah. It may take something. Okay? So what are you going to do for me on the test? I'm not going to give you this antigram sheet. However, I will let you use the antigram sheet as a reminder. Okay? All I'm looking for on your test, when I ask you what would your selected cell 
need to be. All you need to write on your test is big D negative, big C positive, little c negative, negative, big E positive, little E negative. That's all you need to put on your test. And I'll let you use your antigram as a reminder as far as, you know what, I think it's just easier when you're looking, because then you got your dosers right next to each other and just kind of as a reminder. You're going to have it in the lab. I mean, it's not anything that you're not going to already have. Okay? But on your test, this is an easy enough answer. Make sense? So then what you have to do, now I have found out that my patient has big D. So what was your next question on your homework? So they have big D antibodies. Do I want to give them blood that has the D antigen? No, you don't. So what red cells are D negative? O negative? Not necessarily O because that's the blood group system. Just negative. Yeah, okay. Do you have to antigen type the patient for D? You probably already did, didn't you? When you did their ABO or H, you already did. Do you have to antigen type the donor? When you get the blood out of the refrigerator, what does it say on the bag? O positive or O negative. So that antigen they've already typed for you. So you don't have to retype it. You just go to the fridge and get a negative unit. Absolutely. Make sense? So D is probably the easiest one, and pi D is one of the more common ones. You don't have to antigen type. It's already been for you at the blood bank. Yes, ma'am. I can understand number three. I put, does antigen negative blood exist? Because when you ask that, you're going to ask about what the antibody we're expecting. I mean. So explain again. So when, would you give this patient antigen negative blood? You didn't understand the question? No, I put, does antigen negative blood exist? Oh. Like, for all antigens, there, oh. there are no, yeah. no. Yeah. So I, a better way to say this is, would you give this patient D antigen negative blood? Or that would be a bit, but then I'd give you the answer. But that would have given you the answer as to what the antibody was, so. Yeah. Okay, but you mean RH positive or negative? Is that what you're talking about? For this particular patient. Okay. So let's say you identified a cow, yeah. and you said, okay, which antibody is suspected? Cow. Mm -hmm. What you can't rule out? Big C and Big E, okay? What would, what would your selected cell look like? So if we think it's cow, but we can't rule out Big C, and we can't rule out Big E, what would your selected cell look like? Okay, or cow would have to be negative. Correct. Big C would need to be positive. Little C, C would need to be negative. Big E. Positive. Little E. Negative. Right? Yeah. Now, would you antigen type your patient? Yes. No, you haven't already, right? It's not on that bag of blood. That's one you don't know. Would you antigen type your donors? Yes. Because if you have the antibody, you want to make sure that you don't get in the blood. Alright, so that brings us up to antigen table. Well, I'm asking you shall receive. take that patient's red cells. You now know that you have, we'll use Cal because that's easier than D. So you now know that you have Cal antibody. Antibody. You go to the refrigerator and you get your little bottle anti-Cal. You add your patient's cells to the anti-Cal reagent and what reaction would you expect on the patient? They have the antibody. 
they got it from a donor or a baby. So unless it's an auto, and we're going to assume it's not because our auto control is negative. That's on there, isn't it? Okay. So we want our patient antigen type to be negative, right? We have the antibody. We shouldn't have the antigen. Not like in the AVO system, okay? We have two donors, donor one and donor two. What reactions do you want your donors to be? Do you want them to have the antigen if your patient has the antibody? No. Do they have any We know the patient has the antibody in their plasma. So we don't want to give them the antigen. Right? Sorry. On your first step, did you add antibody to suspected antibody? You didn't you add, add antigen. You added antibody. You're talking about reagent? You said you added anti-K to a patient that you believed had the L antibody. Right. So you're working with the red cells. Okay. So you're not adding pla their patient plasma to this. Okay. You're adding reagent anti-K, just like anti-A, anti-V, anti-D. It's just now anti-Cal. Okay. Okay? Go to the refrigerator, get a little bottle, and it says anti-Cal. Okay. Okay? You're still working with your patient cell suspension. So it's antigens on the patient. Okay. Okay? If the patient has the Cal antibody, their Blood probably does not have the antigen. That's another way to confirm that's truly the antibody. Okay? So you, the patient needs two units of blood. So you go to the refrigerator. Cal is only 9%. So you're thinking, oh, well, I need two. I'll just grab three. Okay? You take a drop of donor blood, make your cell suspension, add it with your anti-K reagent, what do you want your donor to be, positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because then you can give them their, the blood, right? So you want both your, your donors to be negative, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you know that your anti-Cal reagent worked? <clears throat> you have to do a control. Kind of like the RH control we did. Okay, but now we need an antigen control, Okay. right? So you're going to go back to your panel that you have your results on. Which one's easier for you to see on the <coughs> log of this one. Let's say this is the panel um, that you did. And again, you can use uh, a different panel. It doesn't really matter. And now you need a positive control and a negative control. Positive to make sure you're Antistera that's been in your refrigerator for the last six months still works. And you want to make sure that it's truly positive with the anti-cal and not some other interfering substance or something else. Because this is important, right? We got to give this patient antigen negative blood. Okay, so your control. You need a positive and you need a negative. So looking at your antigram, which cell now, Kel doesn't dose, so we really couldn't care, right? Which cell would give us a positive reaction if we used that cell in your panel against anti-Kel? Three. Number three, right? Because number three is positive. So I would just go grab that cell out of my panel, add my two drops of anti-K, my one drop of cell suspension, and run it through my IAT. And I would expect a positive reaction. How did she pick three? Because okay. we're looking at Cal. Okay. Cal is positive. Oh, okay. The antigen is positive. Okay. Means that reagent cell has that antigen. Okay. So if my patient has that antibody, right? Okay. But now I'm adding reagent antibody. Reagent anti Cal. Okay. Now looking at 
Now we want a negative. We want to make sure that we don't have some funky reaction that turned our positive positive. We want a true negative. Looking at your antigram, what cell could you use as your negative? Can you put three and what is that? Twelve? Not three. Then you put three and twelve. Okay, there you go. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the button part. So you can use cell number one, right? And what kind of reaction would you be expecting? Negative. Negative. Right? Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, ah, we're going to do a doser because dosers are different. Now, if I can get the chalk without falling on my face, if I have, um, I'm just going to make it easy so I'm going to write a bunch of letters. So I have an M. And M is reacting at 37, which makes it clinically significant. That's the antibody I have identified. Okay? I have to antigen type with M. I go to the refrigerator, I get my anti M reagent. What do I want my patient to be? Negative. Negative. What do I want my donor one to be and donor two? Negative. Correct. Bless you. Thank you. I have a like. I'm sorry. I said it's for the last. Thank you. All right. So your patient should be negative. Your donor should be negative. Right. What controls can you use? What can you use for your positive and negative control? So looking at your antigram sheet, let's do negative first. Which one on your antigram sheet would be good for a negative? Two. Number cell number two. We don't care what N is at this point, right? Mm -hmm. We only want it to be negative for M. So you're right, you could use cell number two. Now we need a positive control. Yeah. One good answer. Why did you pick one? Because it won't dose with N. Right. Oh, that's the wrong answer, though. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, you don't want to use number one because now you need a heterozygous cell. So for pot, also you need two positive reactions for N and N. Yes. Because why don't we rule out on a heterozygous? Because it could give you a weak reaction and you could be missing something, right? Now we want to catch it in its weakest state. We want to make sure that the antibody is reacting with, truly with that antigen. So we want it in its weakest state. So looking at your antigram, you now want a heterozygous cell for your um, positive control. Which one would you use? Five. Cell number five. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So every time you say homozygous, 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 now you get heterozygous. So I must have missed the reason we were doing M. Why would you? Just because then I didn't have to write FYA and FYB. I just with less letters I had to write. <laughs> okay. It's hard for me to stand and write and talk. I get out of breath. <laughs> so when we have a cell that we believe it to be the antigen, or Antibody. antibody. When we have the antibody and we believe it's one that's a doser, that's when we need to find a weak doser on the, for the patient to check? Not on the patient, on your control. You're going to oh, run a control. Okay. Your patient is what your patient is. Yeah. They're either homozygous or heterozygous. Your donor is what your donor is. Then why does it have to be a heterozygous for the control. Because now you want it to be in its weakest state. Your control. You don't want to pick a strong one because then what if you're really missing something? You want it in the weakest state as your positive control. Aren't you more likely to miss something in the weakest state? So you don't want to miss it. You're expecting a positive. If it comes up negative, you have a problem. Okay. okay. Correct. Okay. So on your test, you have two panels. I know one of the two. I don't know about the second one. One is a, a case study, and the other one is one I made up. So probably it was there. But anyway, I'm going to ask you what antibody do you suspect. So you're going to do the cross out on the sh and, and the antigram. 
and you're going to ask me what antibody do you suspect. So you're going to cross out, and then you're going to tell me which one matches your pattern. Again, single antibody, I'm not going to make it that hard. Okay. And then what antibodies aren't ruled out. Again, on your antigram, or on your cell panel, I pretty much gave you the clinically significant. I think I left off a lot of the goopy ones, didn't I? Yeah, I don't have like JSAs and all that stuff. So again, this might be a good rule just as far as, and I'll let you use your antigram sheet. You bring it, I mean, select the cell panel. You bring it, you can use it, okay? Um, so again, uh, so which antibodies are not ruled out? You can list them all if you want. If you want to take a chance and just list it as clinically significant, that's okay too. Won't be wrong either way unless you miss a clinically significant. If like on your homework, you told me the only one you couldn't rule out was C, then it would be a wrong answer because E is clinically significant, okay? And then um, you're going to tell me, um, what selected cell would you do? And again, just like we did just then. So if I think it's C, a D and I need to rule out C, what would it look like? So D negative, C, po negative, C positive, little C negative, just like we did on the board. And I don't So we get to manipulate that ourselves. Absolutely. Okay. I don't, don't think antigen is on this, the antigen typing. You don't have to fill out the antigen typing, but I do ask you questions. So on antigen typing, you want your patient result to always be? You want your donors to always be? You want your positive control to always be? Heterozygous and positive. You want your... Negative control to always be? Negative. And do I care if it's heterozygous or homozygous? No. No, it just has to be negative. What were we doing heterozygous earlier then? I'm sorry? The uh, MNN positive positive, that's the uh, Heterozygous. MNN positive positive heterozygous. Yes, but like two minutes ago we were doing it. Uh, ooh, something weak. What is weakest state? Then it's M and N because it's two. Remember, dosers are stronger when it's two doses of the same thing. It's weaker when it's the antigen and it's allele. Okay. Remember, you're too thinking about your monkey bars. And do I have an M to grab onto here and an N over here that won't hang? Or do I have two M's that I can grab onto? Okay. It's stronger. Okay? Questions? There is mine. I'll probably be here in case there are any questions, but if you do have a question. Oh yeah, you said we don't forget about the negative thing that's positive. I just called it. I just called it. I called it. I just called it. I 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 called it. I